Jinky Extend. This is one of the weirdest enemies I've ever seen. One part is a semi-decent coming of age series for a main heroine who's kind of a tomboy and trying to um, persevere against her evil mom. But the second half is one clusterfuck of a rushed, super fast paced, psychological, science fiction blended showdown. And to say it didn't make sense would be an understatement. So Jinky Extend is one train wreck of an anime. Watch it if you want to get drunk. We want to be really surprised about how weird writing and anime can get. Starship Operators is an attempt to create a reality show in the pretext of a war. And basically you have some teenagers who want to be funded so they can defend their land from invaders. They get their money by making a TV reality out of the war. Which yeah, it is weird and to be honest it's not much of a war drama or something like that. To the most part it plays out like a silly rom-com actually. And towards the end they try to turn everything to this some sort of a conspiracy thing where popularity can turn against you and the tides of war can just favor the other side because well, they have more money or influence. So on paper the concept is very good but when they try to execute it in just 12 episodes and they're wasting so many episodes on just showing generic teenagers having rom-com moments or even when their spaceship is completely overpowered you don't even know how their side was taken over by the enemy if a typical ship can just blow up everything just like that. So yeah, good concept, but they made it seem like it's bullshit. They could have done a lot more with it. So if you want something similar, I suggest Flag or even Skycrawlers. Those two may be boring, but they did much better in terms of realism of war. Oh my goddess, this is a reboot of the original OVA. It's a 24 episode series, it gives a lot more development to the characters, but the original series wasn't really that great in the first place. It's one of the original romance, slice of life type deals. Very honest attempt to have fan service. We have Pussy main character who's actually a good guy, and unlike most kind of harems, he actually shows how he's a good guy. He actually puts a lot of self-sacrifice into his life, so he very rarely has any time for a girlfriend. It's endearing. There's a reason why this stood the test of time for anime fans. I mean, you know, it's still escapism but at least it was a very honest attempt at it so I don't hate it so much. But of course if you don't like harems or fan service or any of the ilk then this won't do anything for you. It's interesting enough but I wouldn't really recommend it to most people. That's still pretty boring. Xenogears and Xenosaga are amongst my most favorite video games. They are like the neon genesis of JRPGs. So when they make this adaptation I expect it to at least cover all the basics of the story which is very complicating. And they messed up, pretty much like all adaptations of video games do. In just 12 episodes, you cannot even show the prologue, man. And they water down everything. I mean, the depth you can find in the game is not found here. And all the characters are acting far more childish. Just go for the source material. And don't think that the games are as bad as this show tries to make them seem they are. Maho Sensei Negima, you can totally skip this, an incomplete anime adaptation, it didn't even cover any of the cool manga action in the premise of a boy Shotokan, eh, lukewarm, bad fan service, nothing sexy about it. Just skip it, pretend it doesn't exist, even the main creator did it. I watched Air. It's all really the same. I try to make you feel bad for the characters, but there's no real reason to feel bad aside from whatever pointless trauma they have going on. But they just force them into these situations where you just have to feel bad for them. Everything could be resolved really easily if just the main character took some initiative. This works for a lot of people, but it doesn't work for me. It feels very much like a video game, but considering that I knew that, I didn't mind it so much. It felt very honest. It was like Kyoani was trying something out, so it felt fresh at the time, because it wasn't necessarily romance-based. He was just doing his best to help friends, you know, or break his own family curse. It was a lot more personal based and a lot more mystery to it and it had a sad ending based upon the fact that the curse couldn't be broken. Of course, it's all very forced, you know, typical KyoAni bullshit, but I liked it for what it was, at the time at least. Also, the character designs look fucking retarded. I'm sorry, KyoAni, but your character designs look ridiculous. Like, the nose is like tiny and it just doesn't work for me. Gallery Fake is a mystery seinen show. It's about this art collector. Well, he also sells fake art, but it's one of those episodic shows that you don't really hear about often. And it's probably because the target demographic is seinen. But it is a good show if you're into seinen. It definitely has a more mature vibe to it. I'd say it's pretty similar to Bartender in that way. So give this a shot if you're if you like episodic shows, unlike Rory. <laughs> <laughs> episodic sucks. And now moving to February. Gagamanga Biori is pretty much this totally off the wall comedy. It's pretty similar to Azazel san, if you've seen that. There's a lot of potty humor, there's a lot of referential humor, especially to folklore, and it's definitely not for everyone, but if you enjoy this type of humor, it's a pretty decent series. March! 
Cut us a short six episode anime about a city and its guardian fighting some ex guardian of the city who for some reason went mad. As far as the story characters themes go, it's extremely lacking and shallow, just fighting, that's basically the drive for the whole thing. Just here to show off fluid animation and mixing knights turning into jets that well shoot at each other in CG. And as far as CG goes here, it actually looked decent. Was done by the same people that did the reboots for Evangelion. I've seen some pretty ugly CG, but Karas is actually pretty decent as far as CG goes. There wasn't much to it, but if you're up for some mecha samurai jet action with some nice animation, I'd say go for it. April! So say no Aquarion, Satellite's attempt to be a Gurren Lagan, directed by Shoji Kawamori, who did Escaflone, Macross, he has a penchant for developing some really good original mecha designs, but he's all show and he's got no real plot to drive before. He's good when it comes to mysticism, as it's clearly shown here, but it's like he's ripping off every single great idea he's ever made in the past. The trademark of this show is when the pilots are uniting their robot, they have an orgasm! And it's all supposed to be excused as the power of love which creates life and the whole world is dying and it needs love to be created, so let's unite and have an orgasm and fight the evil robots with our orgasmic energy shit. <laughs> What am I talking about? Not to mention that there's not a single character that's likable, so it's a very forced watch. Unlike its sequel, it takes itself way too fucking seriously, so avoid this and watch its sequel, which has a little bit more of a campy nature to it. Ooh, here's something neat, Speed Grapher. One of um, Gonzo's uh, mixed hits. Many people totally passed on this anime because of its very crude artwork, but kind of like Kaiji, it uses the crude artwork to indirectly symbolize the dark the underworld that Speed Grapher builds its plot around. You know, the premise is superpowers that's built around their fetishes, so it feels very um you know symbolic in that nature definitely not for kids in terms of plot and character development like the show doesn't really offer much but definitely has some more mature themes compared to other anime and just the way they do things is pretty interesting in this show the bad thing about speed grapher is that its plot really doesn't matter it's more so about the characters trying to have some hope about what they believe in its romance starts off kinky but becomes a little bit more genuine and it's also very 80s style with its gore and its explosive violence i wouldn't really recommend it but you know if if you're into shock factor type stuff, I guess Speed Graffer isn't a totally horrible choice. Gonzo being as shitty as it is. It's a very fun watch. It takes itself seriously enough. Ending plays it safe a little bit, knowing because you know the main villain kind of had everything in his ball to begin with. But hey, it's one of Gonzo's more fairer series. And considering the roster, it's nice. It's a good action show. Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicles. Really long, definitely a shoujo show. It's just one of those shows where you have to go and find like X item, reach some goal, and every episode they're trying to collect this item it is an episodic show, but it was left unfinished, so I don't really recommend it to anyone. The manga is much longer, and it's much more boring. <laughs> Well, if you ask me, they made this show just because Clump was running out of ideas and he said, Hey guys, let's just milk our fandom by having all our characters in one show, doing shit, no plot, no point, boring. He is My Master is the first Gainax anime, or first Shaft anime, that really showed without truly innovative people, they just suck dick. A really bottom of the barrel anime. Japan can take an easy way out when it wants to when it comes to their productions. The character designs are shit, the fan service is unsexy, and is very aggressively disturbing. It's disrespectful, just so crude and bland, and lots of unlikable characters, and the humor is very unoriginal. Pass, pass, pass. Basilisk. More Gonzo. Action samurai ninja shit. Just crazy violent. Reminded me a lot of Ninja Scroll. It's basically Romeo and Juliet meets Battle Royale with ninja action. And no, it's hardly as good as it sounds. Despite having 20 super powerful warriors trying to kill each other, it plays out like a dull death tournament. And although they have lots of techniques and try to backstab each other and uh, occasionally you get some really nice battles and tactics, down to it is just who has the most hacked superpower. And trust me, the main characters in this show are way overpowered. They didn't even need 20 people. If we have like those four people, the whole show show would end the exact same way, it wouldn't make a difference. So by the end of it, you didn't really care about all these people dying, and the whole romance thing is just uh, very forced and very bluntly presented. It was losing steam as more characters were dying along the way, and the final six episodes were just dragging on because there was nothing left to happen, they were just slowing things up, and the end is just like, uh, boring. So no, not good. 
Honey and Clover. I remember really enjoying this show when I first saw it. You know, later on, I think I found it kind of overrated. It's good that it's set in college, and it's good that the characters are more mature than regular anime characters, but at the same time, it has a very lighthearted atmosphere. The drama isn't very engaging in the way that you feel like the characters are in danger, because you know everything is going to work out in the end. For this being a Jose, this doesn't even hold a candle to Nana. I like the aspect that, you know, you have these art students trying to discover their place in the world, but the pacing is so slow and the atmosphere is so tensionless even for a slice of life standards it's just too mundane and i know this is supposed to you know make you feel happy and everything but the characters just feel so distant they don't even feel like they're friends with one another it's just like they happen to be next to each other and that just gives excuse for them to spout off where they come from it's a very disenchanting watch it's hard to really know where any character develops if at all the eccentricity overloads any kind of realism i don't know i couldn't attach myself to this at all it had an 18 year old loli being sexually approached by other men need to say more of how stupid the whole thing is, but I won't. Moving to May. Eureka 7. Definitely one of Bones' better works, but I wouldn't say it was as good as most people make it out to be. The pacing was kind of slow, and you know, definitely near the end it does get better, but at the start of the show I just found it really hard to care about the characters, and those kids were really freaking annoying. I'm not even gonna lie, those kids like made me want to drop the show. There's a lot of great character development with the main two leads, if not most of the supporting characters. The mecha style of them surfing in the air was quite original and very fun, and they definitely applied a lot of tactics and circumstances around it. For Bones' as standards, it's pretty fleshed out. Most of the setting gets explored upon in the end. Lots of good narrative twists. We get a little psychodrama. We get a little mindfuck. We get mysteries that are solved, that are foreshadowed, and a nice cathartic ending. There is no need for a sequel, and thankfully there is no sequel, so yes. <laughs> is a very solid teen romance story wrapped with um, nice little messages about war. There's a fair amount of filler, but most of it's just for us to get to know the setting a little bit more. It's a nice watch. A little too shonen for its own good, but it gets the job done and it's honest. Trinity Blood. So this is another vampire show and of course Gonzo. There's a lot of Gonzo this year. It definitely has a nice gothic style to it. The plot just really dragged on and I didn't care much for what was going on. I just couldn't get much enjoyment out of this doesn't really have an ending and the characters are kind of distant. I don't know, it became really hard to concentrate on what the whole point of the show was, so I was mostly watching it for the aesthetics. Kamichu. This is a very Ghibli-ish like show about a girl who becomes a god just because. It's like a very basic slice of life, what if scenario. Just plays everything for cutesy factor. It doesn't try to play the lane card if you know what I'm saying. Mostly just about her trying to stay grounded with reality which makes it very boring. But hey, if you like the feels, it's just a very beautiful, well rendered show. But you know, if you truly don't want to see something that makes absolutely no sense, then stay away. July. Pony Pony Dash. To me, this is the first Shaft anime that became Shaft's true trademark style. You have zany, off-the-wall, abstract artwork. Now what makes Pony Pony Dash kind of a fail is the fact that there's no real theme, there's no real method to its madness. It's just weird quirks after weird quirks, hit or miss, and it gets very dry very fast. I was mostly watching it just to see if it got any better, and when it turned out to plateau, after four episodes you pretty much saw all the rest of the show. So Gun X Sword is pretty much an attempt to recreate Cowboy Bebop, the style of it and the episodic nature. Really niffy mix of western and mecha. It's somewhere between Trigon and Cowboy Bebop. It's a story driven by Vengeance. There is enough to the characters to make them stand out, to make them memorable. Not everything is black and white. It didn't really make sense. The plot just forced them together. It's a very enjoyable watch and it's kind of different for today's standards. I mean, it's directed by the same guy that did Code Geass. I'd say this is a better version of Code Geass as far as fun action mecha go. It doesn't fall off the way Code Geass did. It does have some degree of fan service, but it's not insulting. The protagonist is also badass. They don't have school life, they don't eat pizza. But it's just missing something. It definitely tries. It's not a horrible show, but it's not covering up. By no means is this mature, deep, original, or resourceful. It's crafty, there's occasional wit about it, and there's some good mecha designs, and for a western, you know, you get the job done, but that's it. It's a very basic story. <laughs> Yay, one of the greatest animes of all time. All in 20 minutes? Mars of Destruction. This is a hallmark of anime storytelling, and I recommend all of you to watch this glorious anime for free, right now on YouTube. And in case you didn't get my sarcasm, yes, this is basically the room of anime. I don't know why people hate this anime so much. There's like worse things than this. Like, this is bad, but it's, it's entertainingly bad, I'll say that. There's some anime, you watch it and you like, you want to kill yourself. It's so bad. This isn't one of them though. You'll probably laugh at least once at how stupid it is. Full Metal Alchemist, Conqueror of Shambhala. I don't want to remember this, it was that bad. <laughs> You have to remember the horrible CGI and pretty much this is an attempt to give more development to Scar's people and you know, it's a pretty bad movie. Do not watch the movies. August! 
It's the 26th episode remake of the original Guyver OVA, and it does lose some of its grittiness, I think, you know, in the animation style. The cell animation definitely had a more dark and gritty feel to it compared to the newer digital animation. Aside from that, they just added a lot more stuff. I don't think it was horrible, you know, I enjoyed this type of show. It was just like randomly insanely violent and not a lot of shit is going on, but you're just watching as people are getting blown up every second. This show could have been a lot better if they actually like wanted to make a legit story and develop the characters properly, but I think they just wanted to show some random gore and have some nostalgia for the original OVAs. September. Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. I found the movie extremely boring. There was some stuff going on and some kids suffering in the beginning and I didn't know who they are, I didn't know anything about the setting, I didn't know any of the characters, I had no idea what was going on. Its presentation is awful. One extremely irritating thing, all the male characters look like females. It's extremely hard to take seriously something that's throwing Bishonen at you without giving you anything about them. As you might have noticed, I didn't like it. If you were a fan of the game, you would like it. I said I didn't play the game. And that's your problem. That still stands as bad presentation. This should have been a work for itself that took the story of the video game as inspiration. So that's just lazy storytelling and fan service. Considering it's full CGI, it's actually pretty decent. Like, it doesn't look cheap or anything. Unlike some of the older Final Fantasy anime movies. And you know, the action scenes are pretty good. And if you're a fan of Final Fantasy, you'll definitely enjoy it. Personally, I didn't really enjoy it all that much. Probably because I wasn't really into Final Fantasy at the time or now either. I think it's worth the time to watch it, but there's nothing really special going on here. A little bit more action-based than I would have liked, but you know, hey, for it being a fan service movie, it gave me everything I wanted. It still had the personality intact, the sense of dread. We have uh, Sephiroth, we have one hell of a great CGI orchestrated battle. The annoying thing is that the sub-villains leading up to Sephiroth don't really have a personality. It's almost like bits of Sephiroth were split apart, and most of the supporting characters were overbloated to begin with. But hey, it's the only decent CGI action movie anyway, so you know, it's not like there's much competition for greatness here. <laughs> Plus, you know, the game was awesome. October. Aria is a show that you watch for escapism. Nothing really happens in terms of plot progression, but where Aria really shines is its world building. You get completely engulfed in the beautiful world of Aqua and its interesting culture, mythology, history, and people. It's a show you watch one or two episodes a day or you risk falling asleep while watching it. Simply a slice of life on Mars. You know, a perfect utopia paradise. It's nothing but happiness and positivity. It's very relaxing and soothing, very healing-like. Just to watch the time go by, you know, listen to some good Italian-like music, ah. I only recommend the first season because afterwards it just gets more kookier with magic BS. And the third season tries to have developments where the show wasn't really about it. Try to have conclusion to characters that didn't really develop. So, you know, just stick with the first season. Akagi, Manly Mojong. Technically it's a lesser kaiji. There's only one game and the main protagonist is just unbeatable and always right and super smart and all that stuff. But it's still cool for what it is. Of course, you really need to know the rules before you actually watch the show because they're not exactly going to teach you how to play Mahjong and they keep on using that terminology in the show. It's fun for what it is, but yeah, it's only one game and if you don't know the rules, it gets a bit tiresome after a while. And the protagonist is super amazing, so there's nothing to really bind with him. Anyways, if you liked Kaiji, you might as well check this one. Jigoku Shoujo, episodic horror anime. It's definitely more tame compared to what people regularly think as horror. It's pretty predictable, but you know, the atmosphere is good and the OST is pretty nice. Yeah, it runs on SHUT THE DOOR! Once again, it tries to have this most forced excuses to hate people that want to see them being dead and then you wish them to take their souls to hell and it doesn't matter if you make crimes and then and then and then and then and And in later seasons, they try to flesh out the main hearing and shit, but it doesn't really work. They just increase the fun service and throw in some half-baked mysteries and there are no real characters like, they're all just devices for the plot so you may be shocked for the first I don't know five or six times but then it becomes repetitive and no matter how much they try to flavor it it just fails it becomes tiresome fast Shakugan no Shana uh, I don't want to talk about this shit I hate the characters so much in the show Shana is like the worst Sundari character I've seen the main character is an awful beta main until the third season basic school rom-com bullshit and it makes me depressed to remember the show uh, regret the show this was technically the first overhyped light novel adaptation. Back then, there weren't that many of them being adopted yet. And people were taken back by its, oh my god, schools and teenagers and superpowers? Oh! And, you know, it had all that terminology in the show, which made it seem like it's very smart because, oh, science, it makes sense, and it felt very mysterious. Of course, by today's standards, we all know it's a piece of shit because everybody and their cat afterwards ran to make their own light novel adaptation. And guess what? It's the exact same things happen in all goddamn light novel stories with schools 
and teenagers. Plus, this was uh, the first major role for Riku Gumiya voicing a lowly tsundere, so once again, more power to her. All than that, garbage. So Black Cat is a shonen series that is pretty overlooked. It's by Gonzo, of course. What the hell's with Gonzo this year? There was so many anime. I guess this is Gonzo's peak because they're actually making some decentish stuff. Black Cat is one clusterfuck of a shonen. I'll say this much: it tries to fuse superpowers with Black Lagoon gun action, secret agents, and it has no real sense of plot. It's episodic. The main villain has some kind of beef with the uh, main hero for some girl that he liked. Characters are very distant. Only the supporting characters are kind of fun, like Eve and Sven. But you know, the main character is totally untouchable. Not very fun, not original, just pass. I think the ending could have been a little more less Deuce Ex Machina-ish, but for Shonen, it's not bad. Blood Plus tries to have a twist with vampires and stuff, but it's so long. I mean, 50 episodes for a story that could easily fit in half the time, and so many side missions that weren't that important. The big revelation with Saya and her nemesis is good, but I couldn't really bind with any of the characters. They were just there to fill a role, and the drama was forced after a while. So, good attempt, nice fleshing out of the main characters, but you're just watching 20 episodes for a couple of good scenes to happen, and it's not enough to excuse the duration. I think there's a lot of issues with Blood Plus but I'll give it props for not being as awful as Blood Sea. <laughs> I guess that's something you shouldn't be proud of, but at the same time, it definitely gave more development to the main character compared to the previous movie of this one, but the show was not awful and didn't have boring slice-of-life scenes in school, so for that, it's, it's better. No Noain. Oh, I need to watch this. Aww. For all of you listening right now, you can add this one to the list of the unappreciated titles along with Shinsekai Yori and Zegapain. You gotta appreciate how they mix parallel universes, metaphysics, they stay true to. I like how the ending twist kind of convolted power of love in a very dark twisted way. It gets a little too abstract for its own good but stays true to its own concept so it's nice to actually have an anime not go completely up its own ass you know, for an easy cop-out ending. A solid sci-fi show, but the pacing kind of killed it for me, so it's a one-timer. Paradise Kiss, made by the same person that did Nana. Very great artwork, very good animation. It's simply about a girl trying to find her way, you know, leaving high school. She meets this guy who seems to has got life by the neck. It kind of lets his enthusiasm guide her, give her the motivation to be who he is. Now, not everybody likes the ending. You gotta give the author credit. She certainly knows how to come up with things that feel very natural. So, one of the better slice of life, even if you don't like the fashion-based scenario. Very responsible writing here, though. November! Mushishi, a really unique show. Yeah, Mushishi is definitely one of the better shows that I've seen over the years. Really excited because Mushishi is getting a new season, spring anime, season 2014. The protagonist is curing people from Mushi who are these semi-supernatural beings. They're presenting new concepts in each episode. It's not driven by the protagonist. He still has his own personality and you do still learn about him, but he's not the driver of the show. You get to meet a lot of characters, the people who are bothered by it. Mushi, I mean. It's a really, really well-made, well-directed, relaxing, intelligent concept show. I love it. I know Rory isn't a huge fan of episodic series, but I think that what separates this show from other similar shows that have like supernatural elements and are episodic, like say Natsume Yujin show, or like I mentioned before, Jigoku Shoujo, there's definitely an element of danger in this show. Like, you know what's gonna happen in Natsume, you know the characters are gonna come out fine, but in this show, you don't always know what's gonna happen. Also, there's like a genuine atmosphere in the show that like you don't get in most shows. Now, a lot of people enjoy this and I can see why because I'm also one of those people but I can also understand why you would not like it being an episodic show that it is one of the best intentionally episodic animes just because it has a central universe it tries to excuse the many phenomena that happen in life ever wonder why waves blow or ever wonder why people get lost at sea in fog it has a, such a sagely mystical responsible sending handling of such things there's no sense for magic convenience this isn't about happy endings it's about knowing what to expect from life about miracles it's about ideas it's just about someone really wanting to just have fun with their imagination so watch this if you just really want something kind of mature Sure, something consistent, and while there's no sense of character development, you get to see a lot of varied scenarios, so it kind of keeps itself fresh. All of this from an episodic series, you know, that's it's kind of hard to find without a premise not killing itself. And December. Okay, so Pelka Kun. This is by the same guy that did Ivno Jikan. This is before that, of course. 
this over you kind of get a glimpse of the potential that this kind of setting has and you know, the director's talent but obviously it doesn't really get to that point with Pale Cocoon but it's definitely an interesting watch if you have the time. Overall impressions for 2005, kind of a nice average year, we got kind of a lot of low hitters, nothing really stood out. By today's standards they're all half decent but when they first came out they were like meh, meh you know, just a kind of an ordinary year, just another typical year. Nothing really too impressive. So 2005, the year of Gonzo, they actually made a lot of shit. But at the same time, it was a pretty boring year. There's no breakout hits aside from, you know, Mushishi, which is, I guess, kind of subjective if you were into episodic anime or not. Mushishi was excellent, and Gunnick Sword is one of the better Meha titles you can find. Other than that, I suppose the year was Meh. There weren't that many important ones here. 2005 and everything before it belonged to the pre-Blu-ray era where not that many shows were made each season. Most of the pulp here on is also not relevant because many similar anime replaced them later on with better production values. That allows me to speed up the coverage and go over more than one season per video. With that said, Worst of Autumn is the first Tsubasa Reservoir chronicle for being nothing but a cameo parade, a result of Clump running out of ideas. Then we have three failed action shows, the first one being this Happy 7, which was too happy-go-lucky to be good action. Then it's lyrical Nanoha ass, as in the third season where the lollies are too old to attract the pedos and there are a gazillion extra characters with no focus or proper duration placed on them to mean anything in the long run. And then there is Trinity Blood where we get this convoluted story of technological vampires and vampire eaters and none of that matter by the time you complete the show because again, no focus in anything that happens. From guilty pleasures there is only strawberry marshmallow if you want more obligatory moist shit. And if you like zany comedies where nothing makes sense and get it somehow funny, two of the most memorable ones are found here. One being Pani Pony Dash and the other one being bo -bo 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 -bo. Then we get a bunch of slice of life, some being date sim adaptations and some coming of age with magic overtones which mean nothing in the long run because you're just watching them for relaxing and then forgetting they even existed. The only one that truly stands out is Paradise Kiss because just like all serious romances it has sex and doesn't last more than it should. The only worthy action adventure title of the season is Gun X Sword which okay it's not exactly that serious or well planned out in the long run, it's light fun and crazy action but doesn't doesn't fall apart like the other three I mentioned earlier. And with that said, we are already at the top of the season, with the third Full Metal Panic The Second Raid. This is the only QAni title I actually like, because it takes a run-of-the-mill comedy and turns it into a tragic military story with psychological conflicts. Many idiots didn't like it because it became too dark and ruined the escapism, but for me it's a wonderful change of pace. The characters take themselves more seriously, and it's well animated on top of everything else. And now moving to Summer, which had a rather big amount of bullshit, most of which are a result of not doing much with her premise. The easiest way to create a failure is to promise epic stuff and deliver a lukewarm soup of mediocrity, or in the case of Aquarion, try to be so over the top that it stops being a parody and turns into a clusterfuck of unsettling sex jokes. Or in the case of Gundam Seed Destiny, taking what was already a badly animated gay version of the original and fucking up the little dignity left in the plot by turning the script into the prototype of the second Code Gears. And after that, here is a trio of obligatory fan service bullshit nobody cares about in the after Monogatari era. And here is another obligatory sports show nobody cares about after 50 more came after it. And then there is Kukikaze, where Gonzo tries but fails to create a good sci-fi title. I mean, it looks very realistic, has some of the best aerial fights in animated form, and compelling mystery. Characters and plot though are just there, and they don't mean much. It's not a failure if you see it as a mystery story, but it sure as hell isn't exciting. Then a trio of more run-of-the-mill slice of life where nothing ever happens, and to hell with Honey and Clover acting as if its characters are in university. They're still acting like they're in kindergarten. And then we have a duo of rather successful successful action and suspense shows, one being Basilisk, which is technically a death tournament with ninjas with a Romeo and Juliet love thrown in between. It gets less interesting as it goes on and the powers of the characters are completely broken, but even to this day it remains the best animated death tournament. Fuck me right, Nikki. And then there is Speed Gruffer, which has cool fights with superpowers, high doses of shock factor and even some sex scenes. The story is loose and by the end of it most characters feel pointless, but it's a wild ride and takes itself a bit seriously to not feel retarded. And here it is, the only the fully CGI movie that was done right, Final Fantasy Advent Children. It's funny you think it's been a decade since, and CGI in anime nowadays look ten times worse. Not only this great service for the fans of the game, it's also oozing with cool music and great fights. Plus, if you watch the extended version, even the story makes sense. Well, to the most part, anyways. And best of the season, it's none else than Monster, one of the most memorable and well done psychological thrillers. It's way longer than it needs to be, Johannes Houdini, and the ending is a troll, but you can't deny how its atmosphere absorbs you completely. 
Damn, this is the first season where I have nothing much to say about the completed titles. Not because there is nothing in it, it has many good ongoing titles I mentioned in previous episodes. It's just that the completed titles found here are completely possible for a critical thinker like me. But what the heck, I will blabber a bit about a few of them. One being the single failure on this list, the one and only Mars of Destruction, which is considered to be the worst anime of all times. Which isn't really, the suffering only lasts for a single OVA, whereas other stuff like Sword Art Online lasts for over 50 episodes, and you still need to survive for many years afterwards the den of thousands of idiots who claim it's a masterpiece where everything is explained and makes sense if you pull stuff out of your ass. Now that's an ordeal. This? Mouse of Destruction is a pilot to a convoluted and immediately dropped sci-fi story. They realized it was bad and they didn't go forward with it. Mahuka, on the other hand, got a green light and was one of the most anticipated anime of the year. Who exactly is dumber here? The script writer of Mouse of Destruction or Watanabe with Zankyo no Terror? Now enjoy this run-of-the-mill fan service bullshit as I talk slowly and stall time before I mention the first OH MY GOD! -ess. It used to be my favorite guilty pleasure as it felt far more respectable and serious than any other harem. The female characters had dignity, the singing was wonderful, the production values were very good. What is there not to like about it? Well, how about the lack of an actual plot? Just like most harems, there is very little to look forward to and after a decade of following the manga, I just got sick and tired of this plotless cocktail that never satisfies. I want some actual story in my shows and I didn't get it here. Good for a genre, but very possible once you become more demanding. After that, there are two sports I have nothing to say about, and finally a bunch of slice of life series nobody remembers or cares to check out because they weren't animated with Super 2015 high definition art style. And that's it with Spring. I told you there was nothing much in it. So moving to Winter, where I have far more things to nag about. Let's skip the shows I have nothing to talk about since they were just cool concepts with bad execution, and get to Starship Operators, which wanted to make a reality show out of an actual war and was treated as a joke that fell apart towards the end. Peck, which keeps trying to convince you the spineless protagonist and his stupid sound Songs will make him number one in America. Zeno Saga, which is a very rushed and childish adaptation of one of the best storylines found in JRPGs. My Hime, which tries to deconstruct the formula of silly action and fun service oriented shows, only to end it all with a fucking time reset. A thing which Madoka Magica stole years later and people thought it was original. Fantastic Children, which was this great concept of ancient alien technologies and people who constantly reincarnate. Mystery suspends an action, yet ruins it all by being slow as hell and having the characters yelling each other's names ten times per episode. And finally, Ganguchu, which takes a simple revenge story and stretches it to last ten times as much by throwing in useless characters, bizarre artwork and robots to become as more pretentious as it possibly can. If you want further explaining of why I think of such, rate my reviews. After that, there is a long list of fun service titles, none of which deserve a specific mention for any particular reason. Skipping, 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 and we get to the only non-fun service comedy of the season, School Rumble. I will never understand the hype for this show, it's as average as it gets and heads nowhere. Then we have the only sport of the season, the first Prince of Tennis, which lasted for only five years and was about playing a sport as if it was Star Wars. Then follows the only slice of life of the season, Windy Tales. Very unorthodox art style, but equally forgettable as the rest of them. And finally we get to the top of the season, where we find the only worthy title, Samurai Champloo. It's nowhere near as good as Cowboy Bebop, but if you see it simply as a rule of cool show, it won't disappoint with its action, adventure and comedy. Ending the video with the tops of 2005, which are pretty obvious. Best series is, of course, Monster, which remains a candidate for the previous year. Best movie? I only mentioned one, and it's Final Fantasy Advent Children. And best OVA? None were worthy this year, so victory goes by default to Die Buster once again. 